This month, we have some news about Quartz 64, including the new SO Quartz model, as well as an update on our Laura projects, and some PinePhone news. Big thanks to Luka Zarazinski, JF, Clover, Chris, and Brian for helping with this video. Also, if you want more content about open source hardware and software, check out my channel, Pizza Loving Nerd. This is the video version of the community update. This doesn't have as many details as the blog post, but this video will give you the synopsis. Let's get into it. A lot of work has gone into improving the website. Product pages have been updated to be more informative and there is now a stock tracker in the website which shows estimates for when you can order products. The getting started page has also been reworked with a quick overview of each device's software maturity as well as the recommended operating systems and links to other resources. Comment down below if you have suggestions for either page. We are also proud to announce that we will be sponsoring KDE Academy for the fourth year in a row. This will be held online for free starting on the 18th and ending on the 25th. And to finish off this really short housekeeping section, we encourage everyone to listen to the new Pine Talk episode with Martine Bram from Postmarket OS. This episode is worth listening to for the intro alone. After months of work, the Quartz 64 is now available in the Pine Store. For a short recap, the Quartz 64 is a line of single board computers with the RK3566 SoC, and with its combined CPU and GPU power, it is capable of driving a 4K display at 60fps using the Panfrost driver. It also has the benefit of running very cool, even without a heatsink. It is a very powerful platform and will be the basis for future non-pro Pine64 devices. Right now, the Quartz 64 is only suitable for developers and advanced Linux users wanting to contribute to early development, but the development is proceeding very quickly with both mainline and BSP Linux being booted on the platform. However, it will be months before end users will be able to reliably deploy it. If you need a single board computer right now, we recommend getting another board from our lineup or waiting a few months for it to mature. There's also a visual representation of what is working and what's not in our wiki for those of you who want to monitor the progress. The Quartz 64A board matches the footprint of our A64 LTS boards and the Rock Pro 64 board. This can be used as a standalone computer as well as a development platform for future Pine64 devices with all of this I.O. There will be an optional Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module which interfaces with the board, but in the future we will release an alternative module featuring the Buffalo 602 RISC-V Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module that is currently becoming open source. In the coming months you will also see us introduce the Quartz 64 Model B, a physically smaller board with the same footprint as a ROC64 computer. This smaller size is great for projects requiring an SBC, but the smaller form factor does limit the available I.O. Finally, we would like to announce the SO Quartz, a new compute module that is software compatible and built on the same architecture as the Quartz 64 single board computers. The module will share the Quartz 64 RAM configuration and can host onboard eMMC flash storage. Flash storage can also be added through the eMMC socket or by having it soldered on the back side of the PCB. The soldered on option adds some flexibility for industry partners who would like to standardize a hardware rollout. It also comes with a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module with a UFL antenna connector and the industry standard 100 pin high density connectors on the bottom of the PCB. This means that the SO cords can be used as a drop in replacement for the most popular solution on the market. We would like to thank everyone who has helped us create the Quartz 64, especially the community developers who have been working on it for the past three months. We are also interested in what kind of projects you would like to create with it, so comment down below your ideas. Since last month's community update, two iterations of the PinePhone's keyboard have been sent to developers for testing. There were some problems with the first iteration, such as a minor fit and finish problems and a few oversights, but these have all been ironed out with the second iteration. Maggie has already received the keyboard and has already made it work with fully open source firmware. We also heard that people wanted to combine the functionality of the keyboard with the other PinePhone cases. As a result of this, we added a breakout header on the keyboard's PCB, which allows users to add LoRa and QI wireless charging. However, due to limited internal space, this will require soldering and is more of a nod towards hardware hackers who want to do their thing, instead of an end-user feature. 
Speaking of additional functionality, the other PinePhone back cases are coming along, but we may need more time because of the infamous component shortages. The TI wireless charging chip we settled on is very difficult to source, and we are not happy with the performance of alternative options. We know this has been delayed several times, but we would like to ensure a quality product. Plasma Mobile has been seeing some progress for the current 5.22 release, and more to come with 5.23. As outlined in Plasma Mobile's June blog post, there is now a new audio overlay that allows control of per-application audio that's landed for October, as well as new home screen improvements such as multiple home screen pages and the groundwork for customizable home screen support. There have been lots of bug fixes and more to come in 5.23. We have also seen some new applications for Plasma Mobile, including Tokodon, a Macedon client, Asts, a podcast app, and some YouTube apps including PlasmaTube for regular YouTube and AudioTube for YouTube Music. We also have work going on MMS support. Chris has been working on a new backend called MMSD-TNG, and this backend has full support for MMS and is currently available in the repos for Mobian, Postmarket OS, and Fedora. Since it is a backend, any chat application can work with it, with three available frontends so far. Work has also been done to implement MMS into Peerism's chatty app for FOSS users. Modem Manager's new release should also allow MMSD TNG to completely support MMS on carriers that split their MMS and data APN. Last month we announced the availability of a new batch of Pine Times, but because of the great component shortage of 2021, production has stopped because of a shortage of the Pine Times motion sensor. The factory was able to provide us with an alternative component that is very similar, but we need to ensure that AffiniTime can work properly with the replacement and provide an update to support it if needed. This will take some time, but JF already has two units with this component and is working on it. On the development side, a lot of work is happening behind the scenes to fix bugs and optimize the software, mainly with RAM usage and flash memory usage. Work is being done to leverage the flash memory to take advantage of the 4 megabytes of storage, which will allow for a lot of pictures, fonts, and icons to be stored, while leaving enough room to add more features to the firmware. As the project grows, many new contributors have joined, and right now there are 58 contributors on the project at the time of making this video. These contributors have continued their work and created pull requests with some interesting features including a new watch face, metronome app, a weather app, UI improvements, and bug fixes. AffiniTime 1.2 is looking good and is planned to release soon. We are striving to bring our indoor and outdoor PineDL LoRa gateways in the EndNotes to the Pine Store, but unfortunately because of the chip shortage, we had to move away from Realtek's Gigabit EHY. As a result, we will be having a new revision of the Pine64 A64 LTS with the same EHY used in the Quartz 64 for its Model A version. This wasn't the only problem, however, because we still need a working driver for the BL602 Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chips. Because of these issues, we cannot submit the gateway for certification yet, but we do hope to do it in the coming weeks. Meanwhile, we've been working on our outdoor gateway. Given that the gateway chassis is made of aluminum, all antenna signals need to be routed to the outside. While it seems like a trivial task, the placement for the antennas is not. This is crucial for these kinds of devices and we are working closely with an antenna vendor to offer an optimal layout within the constraints of the chassis. Lastly, we are going to include a 18650 battery holder that can hold three batteries on the underside of the main board and separated by a metal plate from the Pine64 A64 LTS and the LoRa rack module. These batteries will allow the gateway to operate for hours if direct supply of electricity is cut from the unit. Speaking of power delivery, you will also find a power over ethernet adapter on the underside which will give you the convenience of only running one cable outdoors. We will be having more announcements in the coming months, so stay tuned. For those of you waiting, the Pine Soul Hammerhead is now available for purchase in the Pine Store. The Hammerhead provides a large surface area for desoldering surface mounted components. This set contains a special threaded tip allowing for securely mounting either a small or large hammerhead. These hammerheads are made of chromium coated pure blocks of copper and have excellent thermal conductivity. The purpose of the hammerhead is to provide a heating surface that may be used in conjunction with 
or instead of a hot air gun. This set also includes a thermally resistant mat rated at 500 degrees Celsius, which the hammerhead can be safely placed on. If you do not have a hot air gun on hand, this is a great set for those of you who need to remove more than a single component from a PCB. This set is available for $25 and if you want one, get it ASAP because pine sole accessories sell out quickly. Anyways, that is it. Have a great day, evening, week, and month until our next update.